Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing some more locksmith stuff. One of our customers called, lost their keys. Um, they live up in the mountains. It's in the garage, kind of at an angle. So not real easy to get the tow truck to take it out of here. So we told them we would try to do the job for them since we are learning the ropes for locksmithing. So luckily it's in the garage, so it was unlocked. Um, I can get into it. On the Hondas, there is a key code on all of the lock cylinders. Um, this is a Honda Pilot, so it does not have the valet lock on the floorboard for the trunk. That's one of the easier ways to get the key code on the cars. Um, we can pull the glove box lock and get the key code, but I don't have internet up here. So if my key tool max can't decode that, then we're gonna have to pick this lock anyways. I also have Instacode on my laptop, um, and I'm pretty sure that it can do it without internet, but we are going to leash you this open, try to read and decode this first, and then check our bidding, and we will find out if that key code is the same as what we pick and decode here. I'm mainly doing this just because I'm still learning the ropes when it comes to picking these and decoding them. Some of them are a little trickier than others, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a whirl. The, the leash I'm gonna to use today is the HON66. The keys are a high security key. It's a four track cut, but it's not an internal cut on the key like a Volkswagen or a newer Chevy. It's an external cut. Um, so if, I'll show you a picture of the key. They're kind of a strange key, which means picking them is kind of strange as well. And they also use a split wafer system. So instead of having a wafer that's the same on both sides, we have to pick each side, which means also another security feature of these locks is we have to pick it part way, and then we have to pick it again to go the rest of the way before we can decode it. And then when we come to go back to the neutral position, we have to pick it again because it gets stuck about an eighth of a turn. We'll have to pick it again to go back to the neutral position before we can insert a key to test this system out. So I'll move the camera around. We'll go ahead and try and pick this lock. First, I'm gonna spray some Houdini in there. Um, I have just a junk cut key somewhere. I'm not sure where I left it. Um, just a test key that I had cut. I'll probably run that through the lock a few times and clean it out. Um, I guess I can make sure that it doesn't fit this vehicle. Um, it's actually for my niece's car, but I'll run it through there, clean out the tumblers, and then we'll pick and decode it. These don't get a lot of use because most people just use the remote that's built onto the key to unlock the doors. So I see a few scratches on it. Maybe the previous owner had um, just a regular plain key they used, but it probably didn't get a whole lot of use. So we'll clean that out first. We will be using Houdini. It is a lock lubricant and protectant and it's designed for locks. So we know we're not gonna hurt anything. Sometimes you get some spillage, so have a paper towel or a rag handy. That this key won't turn, but at least, uh, at least we could run it in and out of there a few times. So I'm actually gonna move this camera over to this other side so you guys can see what we're doing. Um, I have the GoPro set up as well. I don't know if that'll help us or not. Um, I don't have all of my stuff with me, but we'll give it a whirl. And I did practice on a few vehicles at the shop earlier today. Um, since I just got this leashy last week, I hadn't had time to use it. It is kind of stiff going in and out of the lock cylinder just because of the design of it and the way the tumblers are in there. Um, so we have this lever here. We're going to use that to hold tension on it. This one should rotate clockwise to unlock the door. And that's where we're going to go to decode it and pick it as well. And then we have two levers and we have an A track and a B track. Now I'm still learning the ropes on these, these Hondas, make sure we're all the way in there. But it seems like we'll have like one, three and five and then two and four, but we have to find out if it's the A track or B track. And I don't really have all that stuff memorized. So I kind of go through and, and try them all. That's what I was doing this morning anyways, when I was doing a test vehicle. And they get kind of stiff. And the way that these are, you have to kind of work that in and out of those tumblers as they can get kind of stuck. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it. We'll go through and I'm gonna try the A-track first just because I wanna see where the uh, 
spring loaded tumblers are. Okay, so I have, it's kind of bouncing right there. I have spring um, tension on one, three, and five going up, which means my A track going down is gonna be two and four. And I'm not sure on the B track. So I'll just reset that real quick. Make sure I didn't falsely set any of these tumblers. Got a little bit of movement on that one before it clicked. Go ahead and move that one out of the way. Get our A going down on two and four. Okay, I got a little bit of movement. Let's go back to the top row here. A little more movement. Back to the bottom row. A little more movement. And I'm only doing the A track so far. And that one there is all the way maxed out. Now we're gonna do the B track. Click on that one. And that one there. Five was easy. So on this lock, I had to actually uh, release it and repick it a couple of times because um, I was obviously overpicking one of the locks. But right here, I got it to turn to the first position. So this is about 30 to 45 degrees of rotation of the lock. But we have to pick it again. I think we only have to pick three or four of the wafers the second time to get it to rotate the rest of the way. And the nice thing is if you overpick one, which is easy to, easy to do on the second position here, you can just release tension on it a little bit. It'll reset the wafers and then you can go back through But you don't have to repick the whole thing if as long as you don't go all the way back um, to the neutral position. So once we pick these last couple of wafers, then we can get it rotated all the way over and then we can decode the lock. Now, once we decode this, I'm gonna use a rewritable LCD screen to write down my numbers because I have a terrible memory. Okay, so we have it picked. We'll go ahead and decode A first. It's a one. Six. Three, three. Now, not all these positions will be used. Um, some of them are kind of false, like that one there. There's nothing, nothing there. Maybe it's a, it's a one, but not all of these will be entered into the system to decode it. So we go to B track. We can get this one to go all the way back up here. B is a one. One. And now I'm gonna make a series of mistakes by measuring the incorrect positions so going down i should have been measuring the fourth position i measured the third and then going up even though the pointer go stops at number three i write it as a one now because none of that really made sense i decided i better go through the whole thing over again for the b track and repick it and this time i get much more usable numbers And then some of these will be missing wafers. Look at the, the chart and see which ones are. So double check in here. So now we'll go ahead and release it and we'll pick it backwards. So it only goes that far. Now 
Now, as we're picking it back to the neutral position, um, this is about an eighth of a turn past the neutral position. To get back, we have to pick three or four of the wafers again. Now, some of these are very stiff. Um, you have to release tension a little bit, but a little bit of wiggling and you can get them to pick. And then getting the leashy out of the door can be kind of challenging. Just run your, uh, your picks up and down a few times. Okay, so we're gonna find bidding. Now, not all of these are gonna be uh, valid positions. So actually, the first thing we're gonna do is going to go to lock decoding and lock positions, sorry, and see what we have positions for. So on the B track, um, I'm not sure what this B means. Maybe that's a possibility of a way for the being there. Now, I haven't found any information in the owner's manual, but I believe that B is representing a full-size wafer and the A is half-size wafers on this particular keyway. I've noticed this on Toyotas as well that use a split wafer system. But we have three positions on track B, nothing in one, that one's missing. And A track, we show four positions. So we will enter data in based off of that. And I think I read that the Lishi inverts the data so i'm not sure if that's 100 percent or not so i'll enter the a track information into the b and see if that brings up a valid key code and we didn't need anything on one we had a six three three and then it said number five um they gave that that b number on there so that may not be a valid code either a started from the beginning. I had one, 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 five, three. We'll see if that's valid or not. So that's not valid. So I'm going to go ahead and disable a few of these fields and see if it can find one based off of what we know is valid. We'll try with those ones there and it only gave us one key code. So as long as this key code is correct, um, then we can cut a key based on that bidding and see if it works in the vehicle. So now that I have both sides of the key cut, we're gonna try it in the door. It inserts fine, works in both directions. Let's go ahead and try it in the glove box. It works in the glove box. Now let's try it in the ignition. And it does not turn. So at this point, I decide to pull the glove box lock out because there should be a cut code on the glove box lock. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna pull it out and verify that I have the right code. So inside the glove box, um, let me see here. There's just two screws, two Phillips screws there. We can pull that latch out. And they're already loose, which means somebody's probably done this before. We'll make sure to tighten those up when we go back together. Okay, there is a cut code. And I'm pretty sure it matches um, what came up when we punched in the bidding, which was a, I think it came up as a 0K365. Um, this one just has some more numbers. 6010K365. That's kind of hard to read. Oh. I'll try and focus the camera in on it, but um, I probably won't be able to pick it up. 
See, it is super hard to read that. Let's go find the right angle. But there's a the cut code. Um, I will verify that that is the correct cut code or that my keys are cut correctly and we'll go from there. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the column covers off. I may try picking it, um, but I have a feeling we're gonna need to just disassemble the whole thing anyways. So we got a couple screws in the bottom here. Should be three of them. The upper half isn't screwed down. Um, it just clips to the lower half. Pull out on the column here to get it around that antenna ring. Now I did a Honda Civic the other day without removing the housing from the uh, steering column. That's what we're gonna try today. This one's a little bit different being that it's a pilot instead of the Civic. Um, two electrical connectors here. Gonna undo both of those. I'm not sure uh, if one is illumination and one is the antenna ring. Um, both of them have a bunch of wires going to them. Just unhook both of them. There's one screw. Hopefully this column cover is not in our way because this one's kind of tight to get out of here. So we'll try to leave it in there. Now I would have done this last night, but I did not bring the extra tools I needed to remove the lock cylinder from the vehicle. Um, I wasn't expecting to have to do that. I don't have my locksmith van set up yet. So, you know, it's kind of my fault, but just make a trip back out here. Two more screws from the bottom. So this time I brought the, uh, the repinning kit and the other tools I needed. Is there one more screw? Yeah, there's one more screw from the bottom. Sorry, I'm not giving you, you know, good images of where the screws are. Really just want to get this thing apart and fixed. But we'll just let that piece hang. If I need to, um, then we will pull the whole housing off. And looking at this, it doesn't look all that new. Um, so maybe I will try that key again, or I will try picking it just to make sure that I'm not like one cut off on my cut. Okay, in order to pull this lock cylinder out, there is a roll pin in this larger hole. There's a screw hole next to it where the antenna ring was mounted. This larger hole has a roll pin in it. They make a special tool that clamps onto that roll pin. I don't have that special tool. So just like with the Toyotas, we are going to drill a hole on the flat side here on the face, lined up where that hole is. And we're not gonna go all the way through. We just wanna go until we have access to the roll pin. We'll use a pick to push the roll pin out. So I'm planning, I don't know if you can see that dot. That's where I'd like to go. Sometimes with this pot metal, the drill bit will drift a little bit. 
then I will uh, vacuum the carpet when I'm done because we are going to get some aluminum shavings. And then now I am just going to use a pick in that hole. I'm going to kind of wedge it against the pin and pry the pin down. Okay, there we go. We are just past flush. So normally you pull this key out in the on position. And if you don't, then it kind of messes up some stuff in there. But there we go, we got lock cylinders out. Okay, so now that we have the lock cylinder out, there's a roll pin, it's kind of dirty um, in here, but there's a roll pin right there that we need to drive out in order to pull this little piece off and the lock cylinder will slide out the front. I'm not entirely certain if that roll pin will protrude out the back far enough to clear the pot metal over here. Uh, we'll just have to give it a shot and see if it'll go that far. Okay, the unfortunate thing is the key code on the lock cylinder matches the key code that was on the glove box. So maybe this is just a lock cylinder that's worn out. Because I can get some rotation out of it. So it's probably only one tumbler holding this up. Maybe we should verify that our key cut as expected. But I'm just going to go ahead and pull it apart since I'm already this far. Um, then I can confirm our wafer positions. That little tap causes it to uh, actually turn over the rest of the way. So let me uh, let me get you laid out on the bench. We'll show you what's inside of here. Uh, so it wasn't actually the wrong key code. There's probably just a couple of worn wafers inside of here. So I do have the key blade in there. We got the pin knocked out. So I'm gonna pull this ring off. Now it'll only go back on one way. There's a a, a big um, tab here and a smaller one on the other side so that will only go back on one way. Pull the lock cylinder out the front here if we can. It's pretty filthy. I see one tumbler sticking up. So we are going to want to keep these in order, you know, however makes sense to you. Um, cause we do have split wafers on both sides. The last one I did, this position was missing as well. So don't worry about putting anything back in that position. There's actually quite a few of these that are sticking up. So what I'm going to do is, there's a flat spot on this uh, ignition. 
I'm just going to use that as my reference as I take these wafers out. I'm going to hold on to it because when I pull the key out, the wafers will pop out. Um, be careful because there will be springs behind these wafers that are going to launch the wafers out when you don't want them to. Normally I would use some tweezers for this, but I seem to have misplaced mine. Oops, I just dropped two wafers. Go ahead and put those where they need to be here. So what I'm gonna do is with the you know flat side positioned up, you know, there's a small flat here. I'm just gonna go and place these, I'll say on A and B. This is much easier with some, some tweezers. And then there's one full size wafer here. We'll lay that off to the side there. Now when we flip this over, the wafers are gonna be slightly offset. Now when we flip it over, we're probably gonna lose some springs. As long as you're doing this over a mat of sorts, um, you won't lose anything. So we'll just go down here and place these. Maybe wants to come out of there. And their corresponding positions here. Because they're a split wafer, they like to drop down into the key slot. Where'd that one come out of? That came out of there. Yeah, that one's really stuck in there. And that might be our culprit right there. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll take a look at our ignition wafers here. Here's the one that was stuck. And I can see why. It may have been stuck in the correct position for a long time. Let me zoom in, see if I can focus you guys in on this. I may have to grab another light. But right here is supposed to be a little ledge for that key to press up against. Um, so that ledge is gone and I'll, I'll throw, I may just do a voiceover on this and show you guys these later. Um, when I have a, you know, macro lens at home, I can zoom out, zoom in on these a little bit better. I'll show you the difference between good and bad. That one came from there. So there's also tiny little numbers on them. So I'm going to grab my kit. We're just going to replace all these wafers and put it back together. So I'm using the, ASP A19108 kit. This is for the high security Honda keys. And we're just gonna go through these one at a time, look at the number and grab one from the kit and replace it. I'll probably just speed this up for you guys um, cause it may be kind of time consuming. Three, one, two, two, three, one. as a one as well. And there are full size wafers in this kit. Okay, my springs are all in there. Now I'm gonna use some white grease that um, I get it from Toyota. It's called chassis grease. You know, I don't know if there's a right grease or wrong grease for this. Um, obviously wheelbarrow grease is probably too thick. This stuff is pretty thin. Toyota sends this, um, or this is the grease if you're doing spindle bearings on the front axles. 
but it's a rather thin, it's like a white lithium almost. Now, some guys will work their key in and, and do the tumblers as they go. I'm just gonna drop them all in and then we'll get them all lined up because I may have to stick something in here to get the, the tumblers to spread out to where they need to be. So I like to use just a piercing probe, pretty much just a needle and go in here and I'm just gonna wiggle it side to side as I push down on these tumblers and it kind of gets them lined up. Now let's go ahead and stick the key back in here. And I'm just verifying that none of those tumblers are sticking up out of the cylinder and they are all in there perfectly flat or just below the surface. Now, some guys will remove some of the tumblers so they can, I don't know, save money, do the job easier. Um, but it's not as secure if you remove some of the tumblers. Okay, I'm just gonna hold those in place, flip this over, and stab all these other ones in there. Okay, stick our needle in there, wiggle it back and forth while I'm holding pressure on the tumblers. They all went down in there all the way. Find my key. Stick it in there. I have to give it a love tap here. Okay, the key is all the way in. I don't have any tumblers sticking up. Maybe, maybe a little bit right there. I'll have to check that in the cylinder, see if it's gonna catch. And I'll probably clean this out and add a little grease to it as well. But we'll just stick this in there and, and try it. Now right after this, my battery dies in the camera, but I did put the lock cylinder back together and we'll go ahead and put it back in the vehicle. Now we took this out in the off position, so that's how I'm gonna reinstall it. And hopefully everything just slides into place. Now we need to Put that pin back in. On Sun 2012 and newer, you will have to reset a piece inside of the lock cylinder housing before you can insert the lock cylinder. Get it started and then we'll tap it in the rest of the way. Make sure everything turns smoothly still. That it does. So I will go ahead and put the rest of the steering column back together. Um, the two pieces here, one's an antenna ring, one might be an amplifier, I'm not sure. Put all those screws back in, column covers, and then we'll move on to the second cutting of the key and programming. Okay, so we are going to uh, make this flip key into a Honda key. I already put a battery in it. It is a wireless super remote. Now, another thing I've noticed on this style of flip key, if the key, especially with the Hondas, the Honda has no uh, taper at all, so they get caught in here. Um, so if you just take a screwdriver or something and just shave a little bit of plastic off, just a couple of wipes across it is normally all you need. And then that key won't get stuck in that chamber anymore. So we want to make a vehicle remote. You always want to do the remote first and then the transponder. Oops, let's go back. Honda. We're gonna go to pilot. You guys can't see what I'm doing here. Probably can't see it anyways, but we're gonna click on pilot. I think it's supposed to be that guy. So we'll generate this one. So generate remote. Okay, 
if there's any previous data on the remote, it would overwrite it. Now we're going to go back and we're going to generate the transponder. Search by car model. Oh, it must have generated the transponder when it generated the remote. So we won't mess with that. And now let's go ahead and make sure both these are working. Frequency detection. Well, hopefully I have the right key because they are programmed different. So this might be incorrect. Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> oops. Okay, we're gonna jump in the vehicle, see which one of these will program to the vehicle. Um, I don't know if either one will, and I might have screwed myself by cutting this key to, before I made sure that it was the correct frequency for the vehicle. So we're gonna go immobilizer, accept, go Honda. Go ahead and turn the key on. So I can pull the VIN number. Theft light is flashing. Okay. Took it a while there. Not sure what it was doing. I don't have internet up here, so I'm not sure. We want So let's see if we can just add a key. Without having a current key. Plan B because I cut the wrong Honda key and I don't have another one with me. Um, I have more on order, but they haven't showed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to program another X-Horse remote. Um, this is the Ford style. So I put another key bleed in there and a battery and a battery generating a remote. Complete. Okay. I suppose we can just do all keys lost again. Um, we'll just program both remotes at the same time. Oh, we need to have the key on. Duh. Start. Key off, key off, key on, key on. Yep. Yes, I want to learn another another one. Turn it off. Insert the new key. Turn it on. No more keys. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Theft light is out. Turn the key off. Turn it on. Turn it off. Okay.
Okay, both keys start the engine. And we're done with that process. Now, I don't know if these remotes have to be programmed separate. They must have to be. Have all remotes for the vehicle on hand. Make sure all the doors and rear hatch are closed during programming. You need one remote to get into programming mode, but all remotes must be programmed during the same period. So I'm guessing it's a manual remote programming process. I'll make sure all the doors are shut here. Just to make sure the Autel doesn't have an easier way. Since it's now loaded, we'll go in this way and double check. Okay, I don't see anything there with the Autel. So we're gonna do it the way from the key tool max. One, 1,000, off. On, one, 1,000, off. On. One, 1,000, doors locked, press the other lock button, and do that. Open the door, shut the door. Heard a lock. Okay, for some reason my other remote didn't program. Hmm. One, 1,000, off, on, one, 1,000, off, on, one, 1,000. Now this time, heard a lock cycle, heard a lock cycle, Heard a lock cycle. Okay, that time it worked. Okay, so both of our keys work now. What a nightmare, but it's a learning experience. New to all of this. Um, customer may request a actual Honda key since I was supposed to get one and I cut the wrong one so I'm not sure I'll have to talk to him see what he wants see if these two keys will work I uh, appreciate you guys watching if you want to see more videos like this subscribe click the bell see you next time